Emma Chamberlain is one of the biggest vloggers on YouTube, and if you don't know who she is, you may recognise her from the 2022 Met Gala. And after being launched to stardom, she is now the proud owner of a freshly renovated Beverly Hills home at the young age of just 21. So I wanted to find out what exactly it is that makes this home so special. I worked on this house with Marie and Ashley from prom, and we had the most fun ever. I feel like my style with clothing and home is very much taking a mixture of everything that I love from any era, any whatever, and making it all make sense together. And so I feel like every room has a different feel, and I love that. So in more boring terms, Emma's style is what us designers would call eclectic. So you can't really pin it down to a specific style like retro, maximalist, art deco or whatever. And as she mentioned, Proem were the interior designers on this refurbishment project who are a relatively new studio founded in 2017 by Ashley Drost and Marie Troman. And on their website, they describe themselves as striving to create fresh yet timeless spaces that only improve with age they believe in design that is approachable, functional, and highly personalized. And central to their design process is commitment to detail, quality products, support of local makers, and integration of vintage finds, which I think is really admirable as this isn't an easy thing to do. This house was built in the 50s, but it doesn't feel claustrophobic. And I feel like that's kind of rare. This had a kind of woodsy cabin in Lake Tahoe feel, but we're in LA. This 1950s home is what you might call ranch style, which is typically distinguished as a single level, but sometimes double, open and airy home. And honestly, compared to homes in places like the UK, these kind of American homes are anything but claustrophobic. But I think what Emma's talking about here is the way that architecture can make you feel differently about similarly sized or comparable spaces, and how material choices like timber shingles in this case can evoke nostalgia of the architectural vernacular of different places like Lake Tahoe when compared to somewhere like California. This is a painting by my dad, which is a reoccurring theme throughout the house. My dad's a rock star and I love his stuff. It would be kind of awkward if I didn't, so I'm really glad I do like it. And this table, it was built by my team and I, and it's amazing. I kind of always wanted to like go in it, but I don't know if it's a good idea to do that now, but I kind of want to try. Ah, okay, so you can go inside. I feel like my cats are gonna love this. I think this demonstrates just why people can't help but love Emma. And this is something that I actually found really sweet as relationships are a huge part of our lives. So it's incredible if you can bring things into your home that have either been made or passed down from family or friends as a way to style your home and give it some personality, which is way more classy and artistic when compared to simply hanging up photos of that last family photo shoot. If I'm being completely honest, when we were like designing this room, I was like, it's gonna be really gorgeous, but I'm never gonna use it. And that's actually not true at all. I actually hang out in here with my friends and we read books, which is crazy because who reads books? This is sort of a wall of inspiration. And I feel like when you just look at this wall, you're like, I, I wanna pick up a book and I wanna think and look at art. It's inspiring. What I really like about this room is that, you know, this half is very relaxing. You know, the colors are very soothing and these windows are so gorgeous, the way that the light comes through. This couch is so amazing. I'll sit here, I'll journal. I've been getting into watercolor. I'm really bad at it. Sitting here and doing a little watercolor, it's a vibe. So this must be what Emma was trying to say when she says that this space doesn't feel claustrophobic, as there is just so much light passing through this room, as natural light and views of the sky or garden can do so much to make a space feel much larger than it actually is. This wraparound timber frame glazing that follows from the roof and down the wall looks absolutely stunning, and it honestly looks like this small nook was made exactly for that sofa. However, I expect that this room must get especially hot in California summers without shades, which is probably why this kind of glazing isn't a common feature in 1950s homes, and why a lot of other homes probably feel a lot smaller, but cooler because of it. I have quite an embarrassing confession, which is that I never use a record player, but I do want that to change. Doing a little watercolor with a little band on the run, like that's a Sunday. 
This might be my favorite thing in the house. Check it out. I bought these little Russian dolls that are painted. This one is the Beatles. This one is ABBA. I'm upset, like you don't understand how much I love these. They're my favorite thing I've ever bought. Etsy, this is a piece that's actually not my dad's. My dad painted this insane piece, actually specifically for my house. He also painted these. These have been a part of my art collection for a while now. But these three are new. This is the peanut butter aisle at the grocery store. And I chose this because I ate so much peanut butter as a kid, it was like an entire food group for me. So this is very nostalgic. And these, they have personality in a way that I rarely feel when I look at art. Like I look at them and I know them. One thing I'm noticing here is that Emma and Prime have made sure that every single little item in this home has either a ton of meaning or a story behind it, as they're not just things which are here because they look pretty. Everything here either invokes a feeling, whether that's nostalgia, warmth, or familiarity, which is something that's personal to Emma, and something that I really admire as this ability to think emotionally rather than pragmatically is usually what sets most interior designers and architects apart. And I have to say that Prome have done a great job here. So this is the formal dining room. To be honest, this table came in a few days ago. I have not used it. I think I love it because it looks so soft, but yet, you know, it's hard. That's something I love. I love when something's made out of a hard material, but it still finds a way to look soft. I feel like that's so that. magical. I just don't eat dinner like at a table. So I don't think this is gonna end up being used for that. I feel like this is gonna be for puzzles, for arts and crafts, but it is gorgeous. So this is a truing chandelier. I've never really had a super strong opinion on chandeliers, ever. It's just one of those things that I don't feel passionate about necessarily, until I saw this one, and I was like, no, that's, that's what I like. Because it's not a classic chandelier, it's very cool. And I feel like chandeliers are never cool. It's kind of like an art piece within itself, and I love it. Hopefully there's not an earthquake because seriously, there's gonna be some problems. So honestly, this is where I eat most of the time. It's just easy. You know what I mean? Pull out a stool, like whatever. It's This is like an ordeal sitting at the dining room table, saving that for an occasion. This is for day to day. I saw a photo once of a green kitchen, like years ago. Fell in love, was obsessed. When it came to doing my own kitchen, I knew I wanted to do something green, but I wasn't sure what. That was kind of in my head going into this kitchen. We actually ripped out the whole kitchen and redid it. And then we kind of had this blank canvas. And so I think it really started with this marble. It has all my favorite colors in it. It has the green, the rusty color, the white. And so then we kind of built the kitchen Definitely based on that. I loved this marble outfit. so much. I was like, why not keep it going and put it under the sink? Who's making the rolls? Me. I've also always really like dreamed of having colorful cabinets. So when it came to painting, I felt like this sort of minty, sagey green was the perfect happy medium. I know I'm not gonna get sick of this, but it still has that fun pop to it. I've also always wanted one of these things. So I'm really excited about this. I haven't used this yet. I'm gonna make some serious hard boiled eggs with this thing. I actually had a lot of fun buying weird vintage stuff for this kitchen. For example, what are these? I mean, I don't know. I just, I found them on Etsy for like five bucks and I was so excited. I have like a whole coffee corner. Of course we have my espresso machine with little Chamberlain coffee magnets. Kind of a little bit conceited, but no, I got a rep though, you know? And then I have a whole coffee drawer. I'm proud of this. Like I had a lot of fun putting this together. This house overall has a lot of light. I mean, in here is a great example. There's so much light coming in. And that's very important for me because I am in my home a lot. And so I need a place that feels light and bright and happy. When you're in this home, you feel like you still get the feeling of being outdoors when you're inside. Absolutely beautiful kitchen, but I mean, with that much marble, it honestly has to be, as those countertops probably cost a small fortune. 
but I do really appreciate the unique design choices they've made here, like the marble doors underneath the sink and the use of complementary materials such as the beige vertical tiles, which are very fitting for the whole pastel 50s vibe that Emma seems to be going for. And the use of traditional materials like copper for the faucets and even for the cookware only accentuates this kind of retro aesthetic. This is kind of like the party bathroom. It's super accessible in the main living area. This is the one that most people use. And it's a little bit wild and crazy in here. I mean, we have a snail. It's funny because I hated snails growing up. Fully had like a phobia. Here it... I shouldn't be touching things. This wallpaper was something that Marie and Ashley brought to me and was like, what do you think? And I was like, honestly, I have no idea. And I love it. Like, it's so unique and warm. I mean, it fully transformed the room. This sink actually came with the house. I mean, we loved it. We call this bathroom the Flintstone bathroom because this is Flintstone energy. The Flintstone bath. Yabba dabba doo! Yabba dabba don't! I always give designers major design props whenever they can keep an original element during a refurbishment as these kinds of elements always seem to tell a bit of a story about a building's past. However, I'm not really sure about this wallpaper as wallpaper to me always just seems a little bit tacky because you can tell that it's just been glued on. But I do really like that it's made out of what looks to be a natural woven fiber. So I'd love this room even more if they'd use materials like bamboo slats or rattan to create a similar kind of effect. But yeah, despite this room being the complete opposite of my style, I love how much character and energy it's bringing to the home. So we're in my dressing room. I live alone. So I had some extra bedrooms to play with. And one thing that was kind of a dream of mine was to have sort of a dressing room where I can get my hair and makeup done. I can, you know, accessorize my outfits. I'm kind of mortified to admit that I have this as an entire room. Like, I'm going to be honest, it's a little bit, it's like, really, Emma? Yes. But see, like, if I live in this house when I'm older and I have a child, we're getting rid of this and we're putting a kid in here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm thinking about the future, but for right now, it's time to be selfish. I put majority of my high heels on the top because I genuinely don't wear them ever. But if I do need to wear them, I have this. I love this thing. The thing I really wanted to do in this house too was take something boring like a step ladder and like try to find one that I actually liked that could actually add to the space. So I think this thing's so cute I leave it out. But then it's great because then I can be like, it's Friday night getting high heels. I love sweater vests. I mean, I, especially take inspiration from people in their 60s. Like they're a really good source of inspiration. Like a cool grandpa wearing a vest with like a cool shirt under it. Chic. I'ma take your grandpa style. I'ma take your grandpa style. This is an ultra Fergola mirror. It was just on the bucket list. And I love it. I mean, it's super fun. I, I like, again, this is like another example of taking something that normally I'd buy a boring version of, like a mirror, right? and trying to make it add to the space. So this room to me definitely feels the most mid-century modern and perhaps the most Scandi from the rooms that we've seen so far with the bespoke plywood cabinetry and the dressing table. But we're definitely starting to see a theme here with Emma's style as she definitely seems to draw a ton of inspiration from things and even people from the 50s. And even though what she seems to like from this era is the polar opposite of what I'm into from this era, to be honest, she does an incredible job at pulling it off. So this is the chill hangout room. So the other living room is like, we're gonna really take care of our minds in here. And then in here, it's like no more rules. The cool thing in this room is the drum set. And listen, before I even show you the drum set, we really need to get this out of the way. When I say I'm not very good at drums, I'm actually awful. I enjoy doing it anyway. Floor to ceiling curtains, nice cloud sofa, jonker's chair. This is a really nicely balanced and cozy looking room. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the one that gets the most use from day to day, as sometimes a claustrophobic cave-like vibe is actually a bit preferable to one that's open and airy, as it's just a bit more cozy. But yeah, that's a real luxury to be able to have both, and she has definitely earned it. 
We are in my bedroom and I really wanted this room to just feel soothing. My favorite part of this room is these big windows that aren't too bright, but they still allow nature inside. This is my favorite bedroom I've ever had. There's a little fireplace. This fireplace didn't come with the house. We kind of built it out to look kind of more architectural. This is a highlight. It's this blanket. It has this little tiger on it. Now, at first glance, you're like, okay, it's a tiger. But then you look a little bit closer and you're like, he's a weird tiger. What it reminded me of was when Napoleon Dynamite drew a liger. And that's my favorite movie of all time. So I got that energy from this, had to have it. I also do a lot of my work in bed. I have my podcast, recording equipment, computer. Also, nobody wants to see this, but I have, I have a lap desk thing. So I can, you know, be in. I lost my mind when I found this cat bed because cat accessories are so not cute at all, ever. So I did this internet deep dive to try to find cute cat stuff, like scratching post, cat bed. It was super overpriced though. This was like one of the few things in this house where I'm like, that just wasn't worth the money at all. I can definitely relate to that cat bed as honestly, there's sometimes nothing you can do for niche items like a cat bed other than spend a whole lot of money or just make one yourself, which is usually my preference. But for a bedroom, the darkest room in the house is always my recommendation. So choosing a room with not too many windows and one that's perhaps north facing if you're in the northern hemisphere, as this is actually really helpful for maintaining good sleep hygiene during those months of the year with longer days. But yeah, for me, working from bed is a complete no-no and nothing but a recipe for an awful night's sleep. But hey, it seems like Emma's superhuman and it seems to be working for her, so she's more than entitled to do what she wants. I sort of had this obsession with this color of marble, like this sort of rusty marble, and I was kind of like dreaming about it, but it also kind of felt risky because it's definitely out of my comfort zone in a way, but I really wanted to make it work in this bathroom because I, I really thought it would be beautiful in a bathroom. So I did it here and I love it. It kind of feels like this warm and fuzzy, relaxing mixture of everything. You know, like you have tile, you have marble, metals. It's kind of just a mix of everything. That's what I like. This tub actually came with the house. It kind of reminded me of a sailboat. I haven't taken a bath in here yet, but I'm excited to do that at some point. And then this reminded me of honeycomb. And honestly, it looks like yummy. Like I would eat it. Honestly, that's kind of like the good judge of like marble. You know it's good if you just wish you could eat it. I actually really like that analogy. Seeing this bathroom definitely reminds me of Mies van der Rohe and Lily Reich's iconic Barcelona Pavilion, which is like a mecca for architects as an iconic piece of the modernist movement. But yeah, that has huge slabs of orange marble. So this is very 1950s. And again, this is really fitting for a 1950s home. So hats off again to Prome in not only understanding Emma's taste so well, but also for retaining more original elements like that bathtub. Here's the bar area. I just turned 21. The cool thing about this is that this copper here wears with time and, you know, gets rings and gets spots all over it. It kind of like has the memory of parties past. Although when I did make the first stain on this, I freaked out because I didn't realize that it was supposed to get stained and weathered. And I was like, oh, like we're going to have to get it replaced. And then they're like, no, it's fine. Funny story about these. I ordered them again online. They're like from the 60s or something. I actually got a bunch of them. These ones are really weird because these ones are so tiny. I didn't realize that they were gonna be that tiny. And I was like, what is that for? So I still don't really know what that's for. I don't wanna know. Like, I like to think it was like for people's cats in the 60s. Like they'd give their cat like a little vodka soda in here. You know, it's cute. Yeah, copper again and those look like communion cups to me. Don't know about you, but the feline vodka story is probably portable too. <laughs> it's actually kind of relaxing to like get all the leaves. I feel like the vibe out here was very just summery. 
and fun. Outdoor furniture, I think, can kind of lean boring sometimes. And so I just wanted to find the most exciting stuff I could find. And like this pattern is just gorgeous and I love it. I actually have people over almost every weekend in this backyard. It's the best way to party, in my opinion. During the day, you're in bed by 10 still. Find a flaw, you can't. Which is why we do have a literal permanent beer pong setup. It's pretty obvious that I just turned 21. Like I'm gonna be so mad about this in like literally two years and I'm gonna be like, why did I do that? I mean, but I love it. Like it's so fun because it's always ready for whatever you do have to. That was like major trick shot too. Wait, okay, I do wanna, I do need to prove So, these corn tables. Obviously, they give me the summer feeling. Everybody's putting corn on the grill during the summer, but actually, I got this as a gift, and I got one of them. And I loved them so much that I bought two more. I also have a random pineapple one. My thing with furniture is like, have fun with it. I just choose stuff that makes me smile and giggle and chuckle, and starts a conversation too. Like, somebody new comes over and they're like, is that corn? Exactly. Love that. Now you're besties. So we're in the bathroom off the pool and this bathroom was fully inspired by the feeling inside of a sailboat. Funny story though, actually, this room when I first bought the house was so scary that it almost made me not want to buy the house. Like this was the room that I walked into in its initial form and I was like, oh, this place is haunted. Got it. There was a sauna in there, which if you see, there's something scary and like rotting about it. It looked like it was just disintegrating. And But we turned this room into one of my favorite bathrooms in the house. And I think it's just so beautiful and it reminds me of a sailboat. Love it. We actually brought the outdoor floor stone in here because in theory, this is sort of an indoor outdoor bathroom when we open those doors. And so when I have people over in the backyard, everybody's kind of coming in and out of here. This sink in the literal middle of the room is the most genius yet crazy choice ever. But it's awesome. Like, you know, everybody can gather around and wash their hands together. You kidding me? An island sink is actually a really nice touch to a poolside shower as I really love how architecture here can facilitate a moment for interaction that you wouldn't have otherwise had if it weren't there. But I really also like this technique of using the same retro crazy paving flooring both outside and inside as this is a great way to make a space feel more connected to the outdoors, which is probably something that you want for a pool shower as it also hides the dirt that you end up traipsing in from the wet pool. And again, the 1950s pastel vertical tiles are a nice touch along with the crazy paving, more timber, and although not to my taste again, but very fitting for this building and Emma as a client. My dad gave me this poster and I was so excited because it was in my house growing up. When my mom was pregnant with me, my dad and my mom watched this movie as the beginning of like their movie marathon while my mom was grumpy and pregnant. It kind of has that personal element. And so I needed it. Also, I'm reading the book right now. This is sort of the sitting room, the pool bathroom's right there. So it's just kind of like the overflow of that. And the theme of this room is very ocean sailboat feel. Can we just talk about these? Marie and Ashley sent me a photo of these. And at first I was like, Something's a little off. And then I noticed that his head is like coming out and I was like, no, 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 I need it. And it feels like summer on the East Coast to me. The ceiling is cork, which is cool yeah, because cool this idea. is technically under the main floor of the house. And I think the cork kind of makes it feel that way. It sort of feels like you're underground. You're sort of in this den. It makes it feel more cozy and makes you feel like you're in a basement. I have to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> the town that I grew up in had these everywhere. You put in 25 cents and you sit on it and it goes in a circle for like 60 seconds. Best 25 cents of your life. I never have to pay 25 cents again. The only issue is this one doesn't move. 
I think the reason that people love these AD open door tours is that a house can say so much about a person. And I think that this tour speaks volumes about Emma. And I can't really say that I've watched a ton of her content before, but after this tour, I definitely can't help but feeling like I know her a little bit better. And as someone with a totally different taste and budget to hers, I'm actually walking away from this video really inspired, even as a minimalist architect. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments and if you haven't already, subscribe.